My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiology resident at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. About two years ago, I published a video on YouTube talking about the steps that anesthesiologists take to make sure that patients who are under general anesthesia have no awareness or recall about anything that goes on during surgery. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this has been one of the most popular videos that I've published and at this point has been viewed almost 800,000 times. But one of the interesting and potentially concerning trends that I've noticed is the number of comments that are left by people describing having had awareness under anesthesia. And so in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down what exactly might be going on here and whether or not I was just wrong in stating that awareness with recall is quite rare under anesthesia. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. In many of the comments that describe some type of awareness while a procedure is being performed, it's pretty clear that the procedure that's being described is typically not done under general anesthesia. And so my first theory for what's going on here is that somewhere there's a communication breakdown where patients think that they are going to be under general anesthesia and not remember anything, but in reality, these types of procedures don't get general anesthesia to begin with. A common one that comes up frequently in these comments is colonoscopies. And in some very rare cases, colonoscopies are done under general anesthesia, but in the vast majority of cases, it's done under moderate or mild sedation, where it's totally expected that a patient may have some awareness and recall of what has happened during the procedure. Personally, when I'm consenting a patient for anesthesia for a colonoscopy or any other procedure that's light or moderate sedation, I let them know that I expect that they will have some awareness of what's going on, but I try to reassure them by letting them know that I'll be right there and will provide more medication if they need it and they're uncomfortable. It really wouldn't be appropriate for an anesthesiologist to tell a patient who's getting moderate sedation that they definitely won't have any awareness of anything that's going on because it's just not a depth of anesthesia that ensures that there won't be awareness. General anesthesia is the only depth of anesthesia where I would expect that a patient has no awareness or recall of anything that goes on during the procedure. Along these lines, another recurring theme in the comment section of this video is the number of people who describe having awareness during a dental procedure. Again, dental procedures typically entail sedation where there is no guarantee that a patient is not going to have awareness or remember what's going on during the procedure. I'm obviously not a dentist, but I don't think it would be appropriate for a dentist or anyone who's providing sedation to tell a patient that they definitely won't be aware of anything that's going on. Because with sedation, I do expect that a certain percentage of people are going to be aware and recall what has happened during the procedure. My second theory to try to explain why the comment section of this video makes awareness under anesthesia seem more common than what I described, which is quite rare, is a selection bias. And by that I mean someone who's experienced awareness under anesthesia, which would understandably be a traumatic event, might be inclined to get onto the internet and see what they can find out about it because it left such a significant impression on them. So if people who experienced awareness under anesthesia are going on to Google or YouTube and looking up this topic, this is one of the main videos that comes up. And so for people who unfortunately have had awareness under anesthesia, they might be gravitated to a video like this and feel inspired to leave a comment to share their experience. By contrast, the many thousands of people who undergo anesthesia every day and don't have an awareness event are going to be much less likely to come find a video like this and leave a comment saying, hey, I had general anesthesia and I didn't remember anything. Another possible explanation is that it could be the case that the existing literature on awareness under anesthesia is just not accurate. And this was actually something that I acknowledged in the original video that I made. And specifically, I brought up that it's very difficult to study awareness under anesthesia. Part of the reason it's so hard to get an accurate sense of the frequency of awareness under anesthesia is because screening for it is actually really difficult. 
Specifically, asking questions about whether an awareness event occurred carries the risk of making a patient believe that an awareness event occurred, even though it perhaps didn't. This is kind of like the movie Inception, where an anesthesiologist can plant seed in a patient's mind that something happened, even if it didn't. For that reason, it's really important to be careful how we ask patients about awareness with recall. So the way that I'll screen for it is to say, What's the last thing that you remember after I gave you the medication to go to sleep? That is not going to be a leading question. Like if I ask, hey, did you remember anything after I gave you the medication to go to sleep? Because asking it like that is probably gonna lead the patient to think that maybe something untoward happened and then they're really gonna start second guessing themselves. And that line of questioning is probably just gonna induce anxiety unnecessarily. Another reason why it's so difficult to gauge the frequency of awareness under anesthesia is because it's difficult to define. On the one hand, if a patient becomes aware in the middle of a procedure while they're being operated on, then of course that counts as an awareness event. But if we're talking about a patient who has some awareness of the breathing tube coming out as they were waking up from the anesthesia, does that really count as awareness? It really just depends on what the expectations were that both the patient and the anesthesiologist had. There are some cases, albeit rarely, where I do let patients know that I wouldn't be surprised if they had awareness of waking up and having the breathing tube coming out right as they wake up. I'll just highlight that those are very specific circumstances where it is the safest thing to do to have a patient be fully awake before a breathing tube comes out. For example, if a patient has any sort of respiratory pathology that makes them higher risk for having any sort of post-operative breathing complications. Again, just touching on the first point I brought up in this video, it's extremely important for anesthesiologists to set expectations for patients so that they know what's coming with the anesthesia. The last theory that I have is that I was just wrong in suggesting that awareness under anesthesia is a rare event. The reason I don't think this is the actual explanation is because I did cite some of the most commonly referenced peer-reviewed scientific literature when I researched this video and put it together before I posted it on YouTube. I'll just use this opportunity to say that factual accuracy is extremely important to me both in the operating room and on YouTube. So when I practice medicine and make YouTube videos, I'm doing so based on peer-reviewed evidence that comes from robust scientific literature. So was I wrong in stating that awareness under anesthesia is a rare event? I don't think so because the literature still does indicate that this is a rare event and the standards of care for anesthesia include depth of anesthesia monitoring in ways that we can assure ourselves that patients are under general anesthesia when we think that they are. What I do think is true is that there's not always excellent communication between an anesthesiologist or someone else who's providing sedation, for example, a dentist, and the patient in terms of what they can expect for making new memories or not remembering anything at all. Having said all of that, I can absolutely appreciate that awareness under anesthesia is a very traumatic event for a patient to undergo and is the reason why anesthesiologists are extremely careful to avoid it. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the original video that I made a couple years ago that I referenced in this video today. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.